And there are loads of awesome videos floating around on YouTube with people using resin to capture moments in time and create really cool effects. Now I have participated in this trend myself. It was so much fun. In this video, I'm gonna to attempt to do that to a much greater degree so that I can try and capture the essence of a fiery apocalypse in motion frozen in time. I've laser cut and constructed this very satisfying box out of clear acrylic, which will serve as my resin pouring container that I will also paint all of the layers in. But it's a bit boring without a cool subject and central feature. Enter Scrap, a character that Alicia and I conceptualized months ago and that I've been spending months feeding back with several sculptors to turn him into a 3D character. And here he is, he's alive, I'm so excited. And I think that's gonna really accentuate the flames that he's gonna be surrounded by and that will give this whole apocalyptic fiery scene a purpose. Now, having the central figure in my little resin firebox is gonna do a lot more than just add something interesting to look at. It sort of contextualizes the whole thing and if anything amplifies the aesthetic. By lighting the central figure with a bit of extremity, we can make it feel even hotter and more intense. And the fact that the character is in mid motion is gonna be really helpful to also give those flames the look like they're frozen in this moment in time. Now you'll notice with the base coat of black down, I'm giving a backlight from a higher angle with blues and purples and low up lighting with reds and oranges. After that, I underlay white, which I'm going to then glaze on top of, enabling me to keep some of the brightness and value of the white while punching in that color. This is a process I actually do a couple of times, working up from the reds all the way up to a bright orange yellow. Now in moving on to the hand painting, I applied fairly watered down speed painting mediums and contrast paints that I have. And while that does get rid of a little bit of the contrast I established with the airbrush, it still uses it subtly in the undertones. And then I can go in with future layers and add highlights and dry brush on detail, slowly but surely really making Scrap stand out. Now Scrap himself is, I've got to say, one of my proudest character designs. YouTube doesn't really reward making content centered around character design like it used to back in the day. So I've needed to find another outlet and that outlet has been founding a company called Gatecrash Games and starting to develop a lineup of characters that we can utilize to bring to life on the tabletop or on your mobile phone in various forms. And Scrap is the first ever invented character, which is exactly the reason why he's the easiest to underestimate. He is a scrappy, aggressive, but very small character which I think to me is the embodiment of this game company I started. And as you can see, the results we have even in these early stages, I, I think it's really cool. And some of the game stuff we're developing is really fun already and we're just getting started. I am so stoked with him. It's like a nighttime scene because the blue from behind and he's lit by flames. The plan is I'm gonna stick him down and layer by layer build up the UV resin, cure it, paint over it and wash, rinse and repeat. Now, if you wanna go crazy with scrap, you actually can because he's available on my mini factory and there's a summer sale which we're participating in so he's 30% off. So if you have a 3D printer, go check out scrap 30% off or if you don't have a 3D printer and you wanna support us, go check out the poster. Alicia and I have worked on this amazing poster with the characters that we're working on for Gatecrash so far. Anyone who gets that poster will get a code which will give you access to early beta so you can see the game before anyone else and access to a bit of a dev newsletter so you can see the progress of our development and when we sink our teeth into it. I am having a lot of fun sinking my teeth into scrap and I think it's time to push him into the flames. All right, resin time. So to start off, I create a thin foundation layer of completely plain UV resin, both along all of the creases of the box and then as a flat layer on the bottom. Then I start to work on the background, starting off with a bit of a gradient mix. I'm using alcohol ink to mix in with the UV resin, blue at the top for the night sky and orange at the bottom for the flames that are gonna be engulfing our character. With those first two layers cured, it was time to start the process of building up the 3D effect by painting in some clouds and a few embers. The idea is the deeper this resin box is gonna go, the more intense this 3D effect will be. Seeing that 3D effect start, but also having the ability to paint in these flames is just a really cool effect and I think could achieve some really, really organic and impressive results, but time will tell. Now, when I did this one, you might recall it started to actually 
crack and split at the back. I started to hear a crackling happening as I was pouring in the first few layers of this one. I'm hoping it holds together, but <laughs> I'm optimistic cautiously because this one is way wider. So there's a lot more wiggle room for it to sort of wing and uplift at the sides. It's kind of cool to come back to this again too, by the way. Let's go. So this is where it gets tempting, like right around this point to do more. But I have to keep in mind, like I've basically got two layers of smoke and it's already adding quite a lot of parallax. If I add more, it's just gonna sort of hide the layers underneath. I mean, that already is looking pretty cool. It's like definitely smoky, like there's a, you know, fire building up. This is where I ease down. If anything, I could probably grab a watery brush and just push back some of this. Just rewind a little bit and keep it more open in the center. Ah, oh, that is so cool. It's already getting the effect I want. Like, bit of parallax in the clouds, but actually the main thing I'm really stoked on is the whole mix, like the sky and the color scheme of the background as it's coming together is really complementing Scrap's paint job. But this is also where it gets scary because now I'm pouring resin on my boy. <laughs> All right, here's the next scary thing, you ready? I have to get rid of the bubbles. So I'm gonna turn the flame down and I'm just gonna try and be really quick and get in or behind and out. Ooh, I don't wanna burn my paint job. Oh, got it. All right, let's uh, cure another layer. With scrap starting to be submerged in the UV resin, of course we hit our first major issue. I have a crack. I tried my best to rescue this and to be honest, I think it almost worked by essentially pushing down onto the cracked area just to make sure there's no air bubbles inside and blasting it with UV, reaching through to these deeper layers of uncured resin that I think were causing the problem. <laughs> Having hopefully just pulled out of a nosedive, it was time to dive even deeper. And this time, getting a little more expressive with the layers. As you can see, I've been tilting it forward with each layer just to create that lunging at you effect. And also to vary the parallax so that the 3D effect doesn't just look like solid flat layers. The idea is that after each of these layers was cured, every time I paint on some of those embers or clouds, it would just create a little bit more of a dynamic 3D wraparound effect around scrap. So far, so good. But as you can see, the box was starting to warp because with each layer, heat travels through all of the resin as it's curing, and that includes the model himself. So when I got to the part of covering and submerging Scrap's face, I decided to go with a little bit more of a slow approach. Rather than UV resin, I used AB Mix Artist's resin, which sets in closer to 12 hours rather than instantly, but in theory, will get a flatter finish without as much aggressive heat and hopefully with a lower risk of damaging the character. And I can only hope that it's gonna end up without any bubbles or imperfections. Okay. This is another one of those make or break moments. I've left it overnight. I've got my dust cover on. I'm hoping it's set and it looks good. Oh no, we got some bubbles. Oh no. Ah, oh, bugger. Is this bad? Um, look, it hasn't covered like his face. This is challenging. This is definitely one of the hardest projects I've ever had to try and pull off. My hope is that with a little bit of UV resin on top, I can sort of, I can clean up. Oh no, scratch. Okay, I'm not improving a lot right now. These loudest ones, 
or at least on the very surface. Maybe if I just carve out a little bit in here. Has that helped? I actually think it has a little bit. Carve out these bubbles and have the resin fall in to fill it. It's this part in front of the arm that's most egregious. If I can mask this. I mean, already that looks better, doesn't it? Oh my God, has this actually sort of worked a little bit? I think it has. Yay. Yay. Okay, I'm gonna paint on a few choice sparks on this layer, do another layer of UV resin and cross my fingers. I think that was another nosedive that I just pulled out of and I actually think it was probably the most intense one I could have bargained for. Now it's time for those final layers. Even minorly tinting the resin adds enough opacity and colour to hide some of the details of the model. So I didn't really colour any of the future resin layers except to paint on them when they were cured. long last it was time for the final layer. A thin clear layer of UV resin to cover up everything and seal it all together into one hot box. All right, this is the moment of truth. Days of painting and pouring and resining and curing and it looks totally set. It's been curing for a while now, so it's touchable without smudging. Look, look how much that has warped. That is bowed. This was the internal area. Oh my God. Okay. See that? See that big bubble? Are you nervous? Yeah, I'm nervous. It's cracking like crazy. Oh. oh, okay. That's one side. Oh my God. That's cool. That's cool. It's really only cool from one angle. <laughs> it's cool to sort of see all those layers though. Like that's really interesting. I'm not super chuffed with the bowing. So last but not least, I'm gonna see if I can smooth it out and get a really nice aesthetic, this polished cube. Taking my box over to a whole bunch of different grinding and sanding stations, starting with heavier grits and machinery and slowly working my way down to hand sanding to get a finer and finer effect, hopefully to create a glossy finish. Are we live? Are we recording? Is this it? Is this a big reel? Is this the thing I've spent all week on? I'm about to show you. I'm scared. I'm scared. Uh, yeah, it looks amazing. I'm really happy with it. Before I share it with you one last time, I have to mention the 3D file for scrap and future gate crash characters are available on the Tabletop Time My Mini Factory page. 30% off only for a couple more days. Links in the description. You'll love it if you have a 3D printer. And if you don't, please consider getting the poster. I know technically, like, we don't have a game yet, but I'm using this as an opportunity to fundraise my dreams of getting back into game dev and I really want to fight hard and get scrappy. And I've learned if you work hard enough, sometimes the things you envision and dream can be really cool. So happy! There is a big bubble, but you know what? It's 99% perfect, and I am gonna be so happy with this as a massive paperweight on my desk. <laughs> I love it so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe for more fun with art and creativity, and consider supporting Gate Crash and the future game dev dreams we have with all those links in the description. Otherwise, that is it for now. And uh, cards on the, there's there's an end card. You can click on other videos. The audio's poo right now. The audio's poo? 
covering up the mic. Is it? Is this better if I, is it better if I talk in? Oh, yeah, do that. Okay, and yeah. thank you for watching this video and make sure to like and subscribe.